In this video, you'll see how to assemble the electronics, and we'll also show you how you can tidy the cables. The first step is to connect the cables to the detection modules. You'll need to mark on the labels which cable goes into its corresponding extruder module. Also, check the manual to see which is the correct orientation when plugging the cables in, since each plug is slightly different at each end. Then we'll be attaching the LCD to the metal frame. Clip the printed parts onto the frame, then slot the LCD unit into the slits at the top. Fasten it with the corresponding nuts and bolts, and as always, don't forget to make sure which ones they are in the manual. Now we attach the flat cables that make the LCD work. Notice that the cable with one stripe marked on it goes into the EXP1 slot, while the cable with two stripes goes into the EXP2 slot. Choose the cable end where the cable bends away from the plug in the manner you see here, then plug them in firmly. The power unit is next. It's attached with screws via various holes which you can see clearly highlighted in the manual. It's very important that you check to see if the power unit is correctly set up for your region's voltage. The PTFE feeder tubes need to be connected. It's just a matter of slotting them in and pushing them until you feel that they've been clamped into place. Each feeder tube should reach the black plastic feeder as shown in the manual. Removing them is just a matter of pressing the blue flange and pulling the feeder tube out. In this step, we'll be mounting the motherboard onto the frame, but first there are some flat cables to plug into place. These cables have some stripes marked onto them and they show into which socket they should be slotted into. Start with a flat cable with two stripes and plug them as you see here. Notice the cable wraps around the back of the motherboard. Then plug the cable with three stripes, starting on the side you see here. Again, see how the cable wraps around the back of the board and crosses over the other cable and plugs into eight pins. The cable plug has ten pin sockets, but when applied, you'll see how there is only space to plug in those eight pins. You can now mount the motherboard onto the frame. Note that there are three 3D printed spacers that go between the motherboard and the frame and the bolts thread through them. Screw them in tightly with the nuts and washers. Note that you may have to remove a flat cable plug for better access on one of the corners. Don't forget to plug it back in after you've finished fastening the bolt. Before you clip on the heated bed cable, notice how the cable is fed through beneath the plate and up behind the motherboard. Clip the cable onto the bed then slide the build surface back and forth all the way to make sure the cable isn't improperly clamped or scraped. With this done, carefully place the glass build plate onto the heated surface. Keep this in mind as we're now going to give you a general idea on how to tidy the cables. We suggest threading them between the frame and the board, then plugging or screwing the ends into the respective socket or terminal. Very importantly, you shouldn't bend them too tightly nor stretch a cable too far as to strain its connection. Always keep them out of the working area of the printer's moving parts, but make sure they flex enough to allow them free movement and not to be overstretched. For connecting all the plugs and wires to the board, it's very important to carefully look at the diagram in the manual. This will show you all the labels and plugs and where they go in detail. Make sure each plug is properly connected and each wire properly screwed into its proper terminal. Once you're sure everything's been connected and wired properly, plug in the power cable and switch on the 3D printer. Congratulations, your B2X300 3D printer is now assembled.